these are very, very hot supplements right now and there's good reason behind it. But me being a keto and fasting guy, I have a very vested interest in what is called NAD production and just how that works within the body. I'm gonna make this very simple. I wanna make it my explanation of why I started taking NMN and what I've experienced and what exactly I'm going after. So a quick kind of synopsis. Okay, within our bodies, we have this thing called NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. And NAD is sort of like uh, the, almost the precursor to energy. Without NAD, uh, we wouldn't survive. It's very important. So over the years, what we found is that this NAD that is supposedly like a precursor to energy or an energy carrier, well, it also has very important jobs that have to do with longevity. NAD activates specific genes that allow us to repair and ultimately allow us to, well, have longevity. And what we've realized is that this NAD activates a thing called a sirtuin, and a sirtuin is just that, it's those longevity genes. Well, there were some studies where they looked at mice and they found that if mice did not have sirtuins, they didn't really get any longevity benefits from caloric restriction or keto or anything like that. So it kind of brought this whole thing to mind, like, wait a minute, NAD might be like the key to longevity, like, could be. So they started looking at it more. And the downside is, is as we age, NAD declines. It's kind of a known thing. When we start looking at the research, it's pretty interesting. So my initial goal when I started taking NMN was to try to improve energy. I knew that NAD played a role with energy and that was my goal. So let me explain something. As someone that does a lot of keto and fasting, I'm very into cellular energy. I'm very into uh, what is called mitochondrial biogenesis. I talk about it all the time. And what that means is the mitochondria is the powerhouse inside of our cell. Okay, it processes and creates energy. If we have more mitochondria, we get more energy. And the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting have been demonstrated to produce more mitochondria, more mitochondrial biogenesis. Uh, they do this via activating sirtuins. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. If there are supplements that can activate sirtuins, then maybe I can achieve more energy. That was sort of my short-term goal. But upon my research and upon taking it, I realized that, well, it's more of a long-term goal, right? You're actually helping energy out over the long-term because you're increasing your ability to make energy at a cellular level, not just immediate energy like caffeine, right? Anyhow, it explains like, as we age, maybe this is what's happening. Maybe this is why we slow down, hypothetically, right? I mean, if you look at the research, it actually makes sense because we do know that NAD declines as we age. So I'm thinking, okay, if I take a precursor to NAD, then maybe I can support these NAD levels and keep me feeling fresher for longer. If you think about it, NAD declines as we age. Okay, if NAD activates the longevity genes like SIRT1, then as NAD declines, we're activating less longevity genes. Another thing to factor in is that cells mutate as we get older. Like we have a lot of mutation that occurs. As we get older, the likelihood of cells going through weird mutations is just much higher. It's a very natural thing. Well, one of the roles of NAD is to help kind of stop that a little bit. So as we get older and we have more mutations occurring, well, we're gonna need more NAD to solve that problem, which leaves less NAD available to, guess what? activate those longevity sirtuins. So we're kind of running into a serious issue and this could be potentially the hallmark of longevity, right? If you're watching my channel, you probably have done keto or done intermittent fasting before. Okay, and there's a reason that keto and intermittent fasting play a role with longevity. Okay, I'll touch on this very quick. NAD, the same sort of energy kind of thing, right? NAD is required to bring carbohydrates into the mitochondria. So that means that some of the NAD that we have is taken for that. Well, that's kind of a bummer. But if we're doing keto or we're doing fasting, that NAD that would normally take the carbohydrates, that would normally move that, well, it's available now. And I want you to think of NAD as like a bored molecule. It's bored. It needs something to do. And if NAD isn't transporting glucose in and doing that, it needs something else to do. So it goes and activates sirtuins. Right, so by keto and fasting, we are not taking up as much NAD for glucose metabolism, so that leaves more available for the longevity gene. So it always has to be doing something, it's just getting reallocated to where it does its work. So 
in my brain, I'm always about more, more, more. So I'm thinking, how can I get more of this? And that's where I started learning about NMN. And that's where I learned about Verso, who is the sponsor for this video and why I'm literally doing this video review of them because they are supporting this because I started taking them and I had good results. Anyway, I put a link down below, but I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute because they're different from other NMNs, but we need to kind of continue on the explanation because I don't want this to be contrived. Like this is my own experience. Verso just so happens to be the one that worked for me, okay? If I had it my way, I would take NAD directly, but NAD isn't bioavailable. Like you can go to a med spa and you can get you know, an infusion, injection, whatever, but even then it's arguable whether it's really working. If you take a precursor like nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide, then you run a better chance, at least with oral administration. So this is where it gets interesting because again, if you look on YouTube, type in NMN versus NR, there's tons of videos, some with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views, popular stuff. So this comes into why did I choose NMN over NR? And I've tried them both, okay? NR is still a precursor to NAD, just like NMN. And R is more researched, but I don't bank just on the fact that there's a bulk of research. I wanted to look further. NMN, in my opinion, and from what I saw, is a more stable molecule. And being more stable is important to me. It also requires one less step to turn into NAD. Most of the conflicting science about NMN was saying, hey, NMN isn't absorbable. And up until somewhat recently, that made sense. But now we've seen that there is a specific gene, SLC12A8, if you really care. Okay, and this SLC12A8 directly takes NMN from the gut into circulation. Now my problems are solved, okay? So if NR was absorbing better but required additional steps, then NMN seems very intriguing. I can potentially get a precursor to NAD and be able to have it absorb. That's exactly what I wanted. So if you get down to the nitty gritty of it, research really supports both. Supports both the NR and the NMN. But there was an interesting study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism that it found in obese people, there were less sirtuins, but also less what is called NRK1, which the job of NRK1 is to convert NR into NMN. So, if you are potentially overweight or you know, trying to lose weight, whatever, well, that would mean that if you took in an NR supplement, you potentially are lacking the step that you need to be able to convert that into a usable form. That is a little bit sketchy. So I look at that and I say, okay, well, maybe NMN is a more direct route to go, even though NR is slightly more researched. This whole skipping a step thing is really only a theory but it's kind of connecting all the dots. But then one of the reasons why I chose to use Verso in this particular case is because I know a lot of Dr. David Sinclair's research surrounding NMN and res resveratrol, excuse me. And when you have those combination, it's pretty powerful. I want you to think of it like this, and this is how David Sinclair puts it. Let's put it like this. If NAD is the fuel in the car, then the sirtuins are driving and resveratrol is like the accelerator pedal. So think of it as the fuel in a car if the sirtuins are driving. Yeah. Um, and then the resveratrol that we worked on years ago um, works on the same enzymes, but it's the accelerator pedal. So it, it actually, the NAD is making it work, but resveratrol will come along and make it work even faster. So there's a study that was published in the journal PLOS1 that found that resveratrol enhanced the ability of the sirtuin to do its job, okay? But then we run into another issue. Resveratrol is not the most bioavailable. So Verso uses a transresveratrol, which is utilized a little bit better in the body. So in essence, you're getting this resveratrol that makes the sirtuins do their job better. It makes the longevity genes do their job better, okay? Potentially allowing more mitochondrial biogenesis and more potential energy over the long haul, right? And just, again, overall, just this longevity piece that we are looking at, it's super, super intriguing. 
There was a study that was published in the Journal of Endocrinology, okay, and this took a look at Japanese men, and it was a three-year study, 2016 to 2019, and they found that NMN in human studies was considered safe, and it did make a change. Okay, so there are some human studies, even though a lot of the research out there on the internet says it's only been done in mice. That being said, okay, I digress. The cool thing about Verso is they are also using cold storage, which is very, very, very important, okay, because if you are not keeping NMN and then cold, it can convert to a different form, which is not preferential within the body. This is super important. And a lot of times you don't find that with NR, which is another thing that I found during my research. But also that one-to-one -one ratio of trans resveratrol to NMN is super important, not to mention the lab testing with every single batch. Okay, so Verso hands down is awesome for that. I did put a link down below. Yes, they did support this content, but there's only a handful of NMN brands out there. And I wanted to make sure when I did this video and talk about my experience with something that I am very honest and very pure and very, very forthright with the fact that yes, this has been sponsored, but I also want to be able to get the information out there because it, like, it realistically is probably the hottest supplement that's out there right now and one of the most searched. So it makes sense to talk about it and it's very relevant to this channel. 